hello everyone and thank you so much for inviting me thank you also to everyone for being here um i'm really happy to share my perspective as an evaluator of marie curie individual fellowship and uh, just want to say that uh, i've been so let's go to the next slide i've been an evaluator for uh, about three years uh, and it it can be that some of the um information that I have might be a little bit outdated, even though I haven't really brought here uh, very exact information, knowing that the experts are, are in the room to answer exact questions. But I thought it's really interesting uh, for you to see the perspective of an evaluator and how that needs to figure in your thinking when you're drafting your application. Currently, I am an uh, evaluator, evaluator of uh, uh, co-fund impact fellowship. So this is very similar uh, in terms of criteria, but the chances of um, researchers getting the funding is higher and it's a little bit less low intensity. So this is also why I have actually moved. Uh, and I'm going to talk a lot about the the intensity or from the perspective of the evaluator, what it means to actually evaluate uh, these types of proposals. Uh, so the first thing that we um, are actually told and that we sort of have to embody uh, when we evaluate this kind of proposals is, first of all, that we are independent evaluators. We do not represent our employer. We do not represent our country or even, let's say, our di direct discipline, even though we are experts in the discipline. Uh, it's not that if we receive uh, an application that is from our direct discipline that we should sort of feel, um, um, let's say, responsibility to evaluate that better of any, any other thing like that. Um, another thing we are told very strongly is that we have to be objective. Of course, that's in the word. But basically, what this means for this type of application is that we are evaluating the proposals as they are written. So there is no way that we uh, have to read between the lines, uh, assume things about the researcher or the project and especially do not Google applicants. All the materials that we need are in our hands. And this is how um, we follow those instructions very clearly. Um, accurate, so I'm gonna say something a, a little bit about that because that's very important. We use official evaluation criteria. That means we do not bring in there our ideas of what are good projects. Of course, these are there, we have biases and we all come with our own background and experience, but we have very, very clear guidelines and actually following those guidelines are very, is very helpful also for us. So we usually do follow them. Uh, and if we do not follow them, we are reminded that we have to follow them. So those guidelines, exactly the way they are written are very important uh, also for you to keep in mind. Of course, consistent to apply the same standard of judgment to each proposal and not because of our preferences sort of, um, if we, for example, judge a proposal innovative for a certain reason, we also have to uh, equally judge innovativeness in other proposals. Uh, in comunicado, what does that mean? That uh, we are not supposed to talk about um, evaluations, proposals, people, neither during nor after evaluation. And this is also something we strictly follow. So how is the process of evaluation from my perspective? Uh, just to give you a sense of my calendar and the feeling that this gives me, usually there is an update uh, of uh, the profile of the experts in the expert area. And uh, as a result, because of the keywords that we've given there, because of our, our uh, availability, uh, our interest, our, let's say, our uh, publications and so on, uh, we are in a way uh, part of the database and then because of the keywords we are actually chosen we are contacted around spring summer uh, so let's say during this period we start getting a series of emails to confirm interest because people sometimes like for example me i am part of the database but in the last two years i have refused uh, those emails when they uh, have been contacted because i'm too busy and so on so there is a, a series of emails exchanged. And then autumn is very important because evaluation, the real evaluation starts to take place. Around the end of September, we kind of receive an email for starting the process, accepting tasks. And um, so those tasks are usually assigned based on keywords. And we are 
generally uh, instructed not to decline tasks uh, in the system, meaning that even if you have a feeling, okay, this is not even 100% uh, fitting my expertise because it never is 100%, still uh, we are uh, instructed to, to accept those tasks. And so I'll say something about you know, this expertise of the evaluator, how does that impact actually your proposal? October is the most intensive month uh, because this is really when we are uh, evaluating the proposals independently and we have very strict deadlines, weekly, two weekly, 20%, uh, 60%, 100% of the proposals need to be in by a certain date. And so imagine if you are working, this is really a pretty intense period for, for me. Um, November is generally when we are working on the consensus report. So all, all our individual reports are in and then we have time to kind of go back and forth with each other about um, finding consensus. I have personally never had a, a dissensus, dissensus kind of situation, but should that arise, there are also very clear procedures in place for following that. So I, I do not really have a lot of insight on what happens if there is a dissensus, but uh, if you have questions about that, I'm sure the experts can answer. So what are the tools that I also use in this? First of all, there is an e-learning course in which you have to go uh, in details. And then there, is a, there are also sort of tests because uh, you might think, okay, I'm going to read this very quickly and I'm, and I'm going to try to answer and do my best. You know, this is a, a kind of a typical human behavior trying to skip time. It actually doesn't work because the questions that the system is testing you about are very specific. So they really want to ensure that you have read and know all the things that are to be evaluated. Uh, and this changes from year to year. So even from my experience, let's say, uh, if I was to do it this year, I'm sure there are things that have changed and I would really have to do that e-learning uh, very seriously again. We have a manual for evaluators and we have an assessment grid, which is also very important. And also as part of the process, beside the documents and the course, um, we have feedback and guidance and oversight of a vice chair and if necessarily a chair. So this is actually very important to say that we are three evaluators, but we have a vice chair and we have a chair which really over, uh, oversees everything that we do. So how is the proposal evaluated? Uh, well, there are two main stages from my perspective, as I said, because I did not really go to another stage. Uh, and the individual evaluator is uh, independently read by three experts. Um, and then each of them have to prepare an individual evaluation report. And this is not a stage when we are giving any score. The criteria were mentioned before, so I'm gonna skip this slide, but you have it there in case you need to see it. And I wanted to just kind of show the structure, also Claudia showed this, but um, so what do we do once we have the criteria? Well, for each criteria, we are drafting strengths and weaknesses. So this is our way of thinking. We are looking for strengths and weaknesses. And beside this sort of general criteria and the strength and weakness, we have the assessment grid. Uh, the questions that I have mentioned there might belong to an older grid. So it's not that you, you have to look for the assessment grid of this year. Why is that important? Because in evaluating uh, the strengths and weaknesses, I am reading the, that grid sentence by sentence. So I'm trying to answer that question that I've been posed there. And that will actually uh, be my uh, evaluation for strengths and weaknesses. So this is the first stage. The second stage, once we submit to all of us our proposal, uh, one of the three evaluators receives a task to draft a consensus report. Why does a person uh, get that task? It's not because of expertise in the area that is so specific, but it's more about moderation skills, um, good drafting. You know, you have to have a good language. You also have to have some kind of an objective. So you need to be able to handle the different opinions, including your own. And I have been a rapporteur and I really enjoyed that. I think I do that task very well. And this is also why the vice chairs and the chairs are actually looking for who is a good person that can do that and lead to a consensus report that is fair uh, and that is um, yeah, fair generally. Uh, this is also where we are sort of, after we have drafted a consensus report, we start grading the proposal. 
Um, I'm not going to go into this slide also because of time, but I put it there for your reference because I found this uh, resource, which is kind of recent, so from two years ago. And I really agree with all the rules and the tips that the, that the scholars there are um, suggesting. And the reason for that, I think, also because they base those rules on successful and less successful applications. So they have also consulted a very large source of, let's say, uh, projects and, and papers written about it. So this is for the future. I'm just going to take you through my do's and don'ts because I think that's more important. Uh, so the point that I was trying to mention about expertise, so even though evaluators are experts, they are experts in a way chosen through keywords and chosen by other people. So you really have to make sure that your proposal is tailored for this kind of imaginary experts, but also for non-experts evaluation. So you really have to strike a balance between a simple language, clear proposal that everyone can understand and sort of a more niche expert uh, language. It's very important that you write everything in your own words and do not copy paste from others because very soon it becomes very clear if you're using kind of proposal jargon, you know, and uh, uh, it's really important that you are personal and original there and say everything with your own words. Something else that is really uh, annoying uh, is when the proposals are very general. So I'm going to do this and that, but no, nothing mentioned in particular. I am a great scholar in this and that, but nothing mentioned in part. So that sounds all very blah, blah. So you have to be very specific. If you are going to increase your skills, uh, transferable skills in a certain way, I need to know exactly what course are you planning to do and for what reason. So very, very specific. The more specific you are, the more chance you have at getting the grant. Um, another thing that is very visible for us evaluators is when the institution and supervisor wants you or does not want you. And what I mean by that, if um, from this stage onwards, I don't know when have you started working on your proposals, but if the institution, the supervisor, but especially the institution does not give you attention, it will be very clear in your proposals because those sections are going to be half-baked, they are going to be very general, and um, and that will come through uh, to the evaluator. So we look at that section, very important. And for us, the, the effort that the institution puts into your proposal is also a sign for us to kind of back that proposal up. Otherwise, it's not going to be very convincing. Um, another thing about expertise, so evaluating might seem very technical, and it is. I said we have very technical criteria that we have to follow, but we are all humans and we have impressions. And so impressions for me are very important. Do not deliver a sloppy work. If I notice grammar problems in the proposal, if I notice sentences that start somewhere and end somewhere, no dots, uh, things that are sloppy, essentially, I really, it kind of, it's stronger than me. And I think it probably applies to all evaluators. You might not be uh, super punished for that, but the impression will already be set in the mind of the evaluator that you are not somebody that is doing the best at uh, creating a perfect sort of work. Um, so I sort of thought I had another, yeah, just sorry, the last three points. Um, so about the evaluation criteria, you have to provide information for all the evaluation criteria. Claudia also mentioned that. And an advice that I would give really is that you take this grid that I mentioned and answer yourself honestly all those questions. And one by one, yourself, but I would even advise somebody else that can read your proposal and sort of evaluate. It can be a friend, it can be a colleague. Do not shy from doing that, because if you're not doing that, uh, you're really risking uh, to lose points. And uh, why do I say that? Claude also mentioned the, the score you need to really make it. This is very uh, low uh, chance, you know, for a proposal. It's a lot of proposals and very few that get, in a way, funded compared to how many are submitted. Uh, so even though the criteria have technically some have more weight, of course, the excellence section is more important. 
uh, and it needs to be mirrored in how many pages and how much attention you give to that. What we notice is a lot of um, a lot of applicants uh, give a lot of importance to the excellence section of course that's the most exciting one and can be very sloppy at the other section. But this type of proposals lose it for really decimal point. So it's really important that you are not keeping this wing of the, the sections in mind and do your best at every section. Every section needs to be perfect. Another thing that Claudia also mentioned is be explicit, structured, actually use also the language of the assessment grid and make it easy because we are very busy. So I'm doing that on top of my work. Uh, I am supposed to be part of a system. I am having daily communication about this project. And you know that there will be moments in that process that you lose it or you lose the enthusiasm or you'll be like, oh my God, this is really overwhelming. So I need to have that proposal structured. Uh, I need to have um, not unreadable long blocks of text, but really headlines, highlights, and kind of very explicit uh, how you are answering, let's say, the evaluation criteria into your proposal. 